the exciting bit for the DA is that we have to ultimately shift our constituents. Our constituency now becomes those South Africans, the 53% who are left behind, who are unemployed. And our economic policy focuses almost entirely on that. It says the state must be the last employer of choice. It says that whatever we do, we must stimulate a city-led economic growth that ensures that cities can break, down, can break down big contracts so that new entrants can come on board. It is that question about saying, how do we ensure that those who are left behind can get a national civilian year so that young people can find a year's program? But that ultimately, if you live in a rural community, if we want to discuss land tenure and security of tenure, it's never going to be a question of the state owning it. It ought to be the security given to family of Makumalo or this home so that they can own their home. And that no chief can be able to come up to them and say, we will remove you whenever it suits us. That's who I'm worried about. And that will be the contest come 2019. Because it cannot be, it's an injustice, ladies and gentlemen that a government that has still got 9 million people unemployed ends up killing people in Marikana and killing 144 patients in the life as it many issue can continue to claim legitimacy as a government that deals with poor people. So we have to be a party that not only speaks about change, but offers hope to those South Africans. Because for them, they are uncertain about tomorrow. They maybe watch Mama Winnie's funeral with great nostalgia, but they're anxious about tomorrow. They maybe hear the land debate and whether it's expropriation with or without compensation, but for them, the next meal matters. And yes, the land debate is about justice. Make no mistake about that, but you can't disassociate <laughs> justice from equally the question about economic growth. We also have to be a party of the future. Ladies and gentlemen, I am without doubt convinced that the future of South African politics is a future of coalitions. In fact, our past has been defined by coalitions. In many ways, the ANC is a coalition. I mean, otherwise you'd have to convince me how Bladen Zimande, an outright communist, can find himself in the same party as perhaps El Ramaphosa, an outright capitalist. So it's a coalition of some sort. And it's been bought that way over history. In 2016, we saw coalitions take place. Coalitions are hard work. Let me say that now. I, if I had hair, you'd see it. See, well, <laughs> I leave my hair to grow. I just cut it. Chiscop is the way. <laughs> but it, uh, I allowed it to grow in the last and the recent while. And the sad bit is I saw it was going grave. And my father was saying, hey, chief. Go shave your head, please. <laughs> Coalitions give you hard work. And I'll tell you why. Let me tell you what the problems are and I'll tell you what the pluses are. The problems with coalitions is that not every party is interested in government. Because government is, is hard work. It means you have to account to citizens. It means you've got to deliver on things. And not every party has that interest. When you are negotiating for coalitions, invariably you are no longer talking about what kind of government you want to run. Invariably you end up talking about who gets what office, what car, all of those things. So coalitions have that element to it. Sometimes it's easier to go into a party, into coalitions with a party like the EFF, not because of what they represent, but because they've at least got a structure. So that when a councillor in Msunduzi gives you difficulties. You can phone up the CIC and say, CIC, this council has lost his mind. Please deal with them. And invariably, the EFF does it. But when you're dealing with the same council and Msunduzi and he says, I'm an independent candidate, but I'll join the coalition. When you say to them, listen, you can't have blue lights in your car in a corner <coughs> office and hire your secretary at an exorbitant salary. They say, I'll pull out of the coalition and destroy the whole government. Who's to hold that person to account? So they're hard on that sense but they are important in that they speak to our future. Because let me give you an example in Johannesburg. Where the coalition has been most effective is the fact that it's asked a capitalist mayor who's fairly wealthy 
to think deliberately about what services they offer to poor people. The project of the DA is that coalition. It's about bringing those groups together and working with poor people so that we can deliver more effectively. And coalitions challenge that and hold accountability in a much more effective way.